It is a beautiful fall day on the homestead. Wonderful crisp air, the beautiful color starting to come out in the trees. It's time to try this oven out. We have lots of hungry folks here. It's time to cook an entire meal right here in the oven. Ryan, we've got a lot of mouths to feed. What are we cooking? Okay, so I wanted to go through old recipes and pick out things that I thought were gonna be really neat in the oven that we just made. So we've yeah. got the we've got the baked beans yeah. that we're gonna be working on and all the ingredients over here. We're gonna to go to that rye and Indian bread yeah. next. And then we've got the beef pasty. Mm -hmm. We're working that up, followed by the pear tart. It's like a full meal and all these things sort of, they connect right here to the frontier. Right. And they all are gonna go in this one firing in the oven? Yes, yeah. So. The beans will pretty much be in there the whole time. Yeah. And everything else will be moving in and out. So we'll be able to cook multiple things at one time, but also have like these four different stages of cooking, which is really Yeah. Cool. And because we only need to do one firing, we're saving time, we're saving fuel. Right. This really all connects together and it, it's going to be a great fall meal. So first thing that we're going to do is get the beans going because they're going to take the longest amount of time and they're going to be in there the whole time. We've got a vessel here with pre-cooked soaked beans. They're ready to go and it's about three quarter of the way full. We're gonna add cubed pork, mm. dry mustard, salt and pepper, and some molasses, and then a whole onion. I remember from that first episode, you gotta butter this lid really well or else uh, it'll glue itself down. Yeah. You can't okay. get it open. Okay, so we've been burning this oven for four, maybe even five hours. It's heated up all the way from the morning. Uh, but we should only need to heat this once for this whole thing. And it's down to coals, and we know it's ready because if you look inside there, the interior is not black, sooty, like, like right here, right? It's already gotten so hot that it's burnt the soot away, so the inside is nice and, well, just exactly the color of the clay. So perfect. We know it's totally up to heat maybe even almost brick colored. So we need to scrape all this fire out so we can start to actually cook in it. We don't cook with the fire in it, like you might think. We gotta drag all this fire out and then we can let it rest for a second. Then it's time to put things in we wanna cook. Yeah, I'm still like enamored with the sheer size yeah. of this thing. It's uh, it's really well insulated. It's not too hot to rest your hand on right. it. Um, I hope it stays hot oh, for a long, long easy, time. Easy, yeah. easy. This thing will stay hot three, four hours to be able to cook in it. This oven is so hot. I had to change from the fire rake to the longer handled rook just because if you get your six, six inches inside of there with your hand, it's just cooking you already. You ready for me to mop this? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mop that out. It cleans it out, cools off the floor. Sometimes the floor gets too hot, especially for bread. So we gotta sort of get all that moisture in there, it cools off the floor. Um, temperature, we don't have a thermometer, right? So we reach our hand in there and you kind of got to gauge it. So uh, this is, um, we should be able to stick our hand in there for 10 seconds or so. This is about a five second oven right now. It's got to cool off. It's got to get a consistent heat all the way around. So we're going to put the door on it, let it rest for a few minutes. We'll get a nice consistent heat. Then we'll put the beans in. Ooh. The beans are in the oven and I put them on a trivet because I wanted to get those off, off the floor so they didn't cook too fast on the bottom. Trivets can be really important in these ovens. Uh, so we've used that trivet. The problem is we're gonna need another trivet. Now, a couple of months ago, I would have just used some rocks and we can use that, some three rocks, but you gotta be really careful and things fall off of your rocks. So uh, we need another trivet. Now we've got a blacksmith shop, so we're gonna have Brandon work on another trivet for us so we can use it on our next dish that is yeah so we're going to go with the ryan indian loaf which is a simple three-part bread and it is cornmeal wheat flour rye flour some yeast a little bit of water and in this particular one we're going to use a sweetening agent that's maple syrup and that's just going to make that yeast go crazy and a touch of salt because yeah, all right. bread likes a little yeah, touch we of have salt. to have salt after that, I'm going to be working on this pie. It's a pa it's a pasty, a beef pasty. It's going to be the steak that I've cubed up. I'm going to salt and pepper it to taste. And then there's going to be a little bit of red wine that goes in. 
I've cut a hole in the top crust for a vent, and later on when we pull it out of the oven, we're gonna put some butter in there just to melt as it rests. Our bread dough is in our dish that we're actually gonna bake it in. This, is, this whole loaf does not hold up on its own very well, so it's great if you can bake it right in a pan. I've made sure to butter it, well actually Ryan buttered it well so that it doesn't stick in there. And now it's time for it to rise. This rises a bit like normal bread. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it up, but it's not gonna rise a whole bunch like regular bread does. Just a little bit. When the surface cracks a little, we know it's just risen enough, then it's time to go in. I'm gonna set this aside. Perfect, exactly what we need. Thanks, Brandon. That's great. Uh, this pie's ready to go in. Let me just take it. Wait, uh, did you get nutmeg in there? I'm cooking with you, John. Of course I did. All right, so we've got our beans in the oven. They're still cooking. Uh, the bread's in there with it right now. The pie just was taken out and it looks fantastic. Next, we need a dessert. Yeah. We're gonna do a pear tart. It's really simple. We've got the crust already ready to go. We're gonna lay these pears in there, kind of spiral and layer them with sugar, put a little bit of butter, and of course, some nutmeg. And these pears are not just sliced up pear. We had to parboil these pears to make sure they were nice and soft. All right, so we've got our tart in there now. The bread and the beans are still in there. So three things in the oven at once. And this is still, like I can't hold my hand there for very long. It's still nice and warm. In fact, this is perfect. We haven't had fire in this for like four hours. And just the right heat to have the beans in right at the very beginning. The meat pie is already cooked and it had to cook at a higher temperature. It's sitting here cooling so that we can actually eat it. Doesn't isn't too hot. And there's still plenty of residual heat to keep the, to keep the bread cooking, which it needs to do. And then the tart, it would have burnt if we would have put it in too soon. Now it's the perfect temperature, maybe like 350 degrees in there after four hours and it's hot on the outside. This may be hotter on the outside now than it was when we started. This couldn't have worked out better for this homestead situation. It is holding the heat and you can cook, we can cook so much in this. This is amazing. Really after we pulled that out we could still put loaves of bread in there if we wanted to bake for, for a while afterwards. And, and then go. dry herbs right, exactly. and then do, it's amazing. Yeah.
the first meal out of the oven. Yeah. I'm excited to try this out. Absolutely. You did a great job picking out all these recipes out of the past, out of the back catalog. Thank you. Perfect set. Those beans. I think beans, that was first season. Mm. Mm-hmm. And they are still really good. Yeah, I like them with the uh, syrup in there. I don't know yeah. if I've tried it. I know that we did a version with molasses. I don't think I tried those. But. Uh, this syrup is cheating, man. It's really <laughs> good, it's really good. You know, I, I think the meat pie cooked long enough. I was a little worried about that bottom crust. Well. But. Puff paste does not do that well in the bottom sometimes. It's good though. That wine in the in the in the meat pie, I like that a lot. I like this bread. It's got a lot of body. It's not like a sopping up the bottom of the plate bread, you know. It's it's mm. it's a meal to itself almost. Well it's it's a lot like a cornbread, mm -hmm. but still, you know, fluffy enough. Yeah. But it goes well with the beans, like cornbread goes well with beans, you know. Right. I have never had a pear tart. You know, I don't eat them that often. I remember the first episode where we had this pear tart and I'm gonna yeah. bet that this one turned out better than that one. Um, oh yeah. Um, was that one in an earthen oven? I think we baked it in an earthen oven. It was in, might have been season three. I'm yeah. not sure. But the 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 pears were I don't know the wrong kind or whatever. They were kind of metallic-y, which can happen with pears. You don't get that at all right now. And this one's perfect. No. So this oven gives us a chance to cook, not only just for a single family or a single person, but multiple right. families. Or in the case of a single family, you're cooking something that's gonna last you for three or four days. Yeah. Or maybe all week. Right, you could get a week's worth of cooking done in this. And it, especially when you think about, like, we could be putting loaves in there now. Yeah, Right. Exactly. And we could be drying herbs, like you said earlier. So it's pretty neat. But all at one time, like the amount of food that we cooked right now, we could probably yeah. feed three or four families. Oh yeah. Definitely. Everything was so good. Thanks, Ryan. And yes. the pear tart, way too good. Ate it all. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, you know what's next? I really can't wait to find out just how many loaves of bread we can fit in that oven. Yeah. That's gonna be a great episode. That's what we're gonna probably be doing next because I wanna, I wanna bake more in that oven. And Ryan here, the camp cook, is usually behind the bar in the Nutmeg Tavern. That's the live stream we do 4 p.m. Eastern every Friday. We always, always have fun. I hope you can join us for that. And I wanna thank you for coming along today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.